I understand there's a lot of engineers here. If you're an engineer, would you raise your hand, please? Oh, my goodness. Uh, my father's an engineer, and uh, that's why I'm an agronomist. Uh, lo and behold, in our river, 94% of the E. coli is bovine cattle. Now, so we're getting into the fat part of the bell curve, and it's getting a little harder to do. The holdouts are saying it's going to put us out of business. We don't want government intrusion. We don't want to change. In my talk this morning, breaking these barriers, we're going to talk about how to, how to break those barriers. I've got seven points I'm going to talk about. It was a, a farm right across the road that had a feedlot right beside the road with a stream running right through it. There wasn't a sprig of grass in that feedlot. And here we were across the road, fencing that gentleman's cows out of the stream. So I thought, well, you know, I ought to go over there and introduce myself to this gentleman and uh, see if he is interested in what we're doing over there. And that's what I've been kind of known for in my career is cold calling, being successful at uh, just uh, getting people to do things they really didn't want to do. So I walked up the driveway and uh, the gentleman uh, got out of his truck, and I held my hand out to uh, shake his, and he, he pulled his hand back in as I told him who I was. He said, I know who you are, and what you people are doing is against God's will. The Baltimore Sun reported that the lawyer for the American Farm Bureau argued against the plan for a restored bay and said, quote, if they can do it here, they can do it anywhere on any scale. Farmland is far cheaper to treat than urban land. We know that. And my friends, I'm here to tell you that the cheapest sewage treatment plant is a fence and a watering trough on a farm. That a 10% increase in population in the watershed resulted in a 40% increase in impervious space. Now we're all, you know, we're having a pity party right now because, uh, you know, the money's tight. We got all this sequestering stuff and, and we don't even have a farm bill yet. But I guarantee you, the wave is going to come back. It's been doing that ever since I've, I've been in this business. The funding cycles go like this. So my advice to you and to uh, the, the farmers I consult with is, is get your surfboard out and get ready. Get that plan done. Get that agreement signed. Because the wave is going to come up and you better be ready. Those that are ready are going to get funded. We have an emergency evacuation plan to get these campers out. So we got our surveying instruments out and we gave them some critical elevations and, and said, you know, when, when, when this road floods, you, you, you have to get the people out before this road floods. He said, well, give me, an, give me an elevation there, critical elevation. Drive a stake in the ground there. So we did. Well, he called me up next week. He said, Bobby, come on out. I got our emergency evacuation plan ready. So I went out there, and he'd gotten a toilet tank ball cock and <laughs> duct taped it onto the stake. And when that thing gets up to the right level... Now, that wasn't exactly what we were looking for. <laughs> but he was really proud. And he was an engineer, by the way. <laughs> Too many times, processes take over the ship and swamp it. Processes are supposed to be in place to help us get more on the ground. Not and I can no longer use a real signature. It used to be, you know, I was a GS-12 supervisor. When, when a farmer got ready to be paid with a land treatment program, I just signed a form, handed it over to a GS3 clerk, and the clerk took care of all the processes. Well, not anymore. I have to be the only one that can take a mouse, a computer mouse, and put the little clicker on the box and put the check in the box. Now, with the conservation security program, I thought, well, how cool. Well, it wasn't too cool because it took me 60 clicks to make one payment. 
So I called up the person in charge of that program, and, and I told him, you know, Dan, it took, it took me 60 clicks to make one payment. He said, well, Bobby, we're just going to call you Mr. Clicker. <laughs> never had any trouble getting my goals done with NRCS, but I had my own goals. And my team had our own goals because we sat down and we said, what's your dream? What do you want to do? Now, I spent 32 years in NRCS, and I can say proudly that I got something done. This is what I did with my life. It wasn't filling out CPA 52 forms. You know, it wasn't X number of this and X number of that. I had my own goals.